Hello everyone, this is David from Automotive Press. I'm really excited that we have a press vehicle from Toyota this week. I think I'm one of the first ones to have it in Canada. It's a 2022 Toyota Tundra in double cab. Now this is very interesting because at first I was thinking, how come they haven't given us the Crew Max, which is typically what they give us for uh, press preview. But um, you know what, this is actually quite an interesting comparison because I've already driven the Crew Max and I've got to know Tundra quite well over the last several months. But uh, I haven't driven the double cab for extended period of time. So I'm going to get to know this one really well. And I can tell you all about the Tundra and also about the double cab this week. So I plan to do many, many videos and go deep dive as an automotive engineer. Talk about the engine, the suspension, the transmission, the interior, the exterior, and the manufacturing quality inside and out. And talk about all kinds of things that uh, I have been wanting to talk about for a long time. So let me first give you a quick walk around of this particular Tundra. And then uh, this coming days, I'll be doing a lot more videos and talk about what I don't like or what I like about the new Tundra. So as you probably know, the double cab isn't the most popular configuration, but you know what? It's actually quite an interesting version to consider. So this one is a uh, Army Green 2022 Tundra uh, in SR5 trim with a TRD off-road package. So it's got most of what you want uh, as a standard equipment. It's actually quite well equipped. And of course, the most important question that most of you guys will have is whether double cab is sufficient in terms of the interior spacing. That's because it is a truncated or a shortened um, rear door. It's still a four door, of course, and you still can sit in the back seat without any issue. But is there a sufficient space for those of us who might be a little bit taller or larger and they want to have a comfortable rear um, seating? So I'm going to show you that in a second, but let me quickly walk around a little bit more. So once again, this is the Army Green uh, TRD off-road package. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Army Green compared to some other colors, but you know what? It looks really good in this particular Tundra. Not sure exactly why it looks so good, but the combination of blackout trims and uh, off-road looking wheels with a TRD off-road uh, emblem looks pretty good. So as you can tell, the front part of the Tundra and then the front door is identical to Crew Max, but the difference is here. This part is a truncated door. And uh, again, I'll go inside and show you what the spacing is like. But something to keep in mind is that in terms of legroom space, if you compare it to Crew Max to double cab, this side, the rear part of the double cab is exactly eight inches less legroom. So it is 33.3 inches of rear legroom. So it's probably sufficient for someone like me, I'm just 5'8", but for someone who's taller, it might be a little bit tighter. Now going back over here and what you get in return for a smaller cab in the back is a longer bed. So you get six and a half foot bed in the this version here compared to a five and a half foot bed on the Crew Max. So uh, you get less space over here, but more space for your uh, rear part of the pickup bed. And so it depends on what you're looking for from a pickup truck. If you don't use the back seat that often, then this actually makes a lot of sense. And in many ways, this kind of design with a little bit of a hockey stick uh, curve, I call it, looks good. But this kind of look with a longer pickup bed and a smaller rear door, I think it's a good combination. Keep in mind that the wheelbase from the front uh, to the back is exactly the same as Crew Max. So in terms of the ride quality, which is mostly determined by suspension and also by the length of the wheelbase, it will be exactly the same as Crew Max. It wouldn't ride any differently. If you buy the, um, the Crew Max with a longer bed, with a longer wheelbase, then yes, it will ride differently because whenever you extend the wheelbase, it always rides much better. And most people don't realize that, but it's just a very simple uh, law of physics. Going back to the end here, you have the TRD off-road package. So you got the emblem here, and then you don't get uh, all of the other fancy features of the Platinum or even the Limited, but you get more than enough. I still wonder why Toyota has not uh, embedded and integrated a stepping uh, footstep here to go into the bed, but you know, it's not a big deal because you can climb up here and just put your foot here and kind of climb up. So uh, you can also get an optional um, footstep over here. Uh, so this truck is pretty basic, but nothing wrong with that. Lots of lots of space in the back. So again, 
six and a half foot bed. It's a new uh, composite plastic here. And lots of concerns about how slippery this is. I agree, it's very slippery. It's same as the one I had on my Tacoma TRD Pro. So you have to put one of the bed mats that you can buy as an aftermarket option from a Toyota. That's almost a must. Or you can also get the non-slippery covering and a coating on this one as a manufacturer's option as well. Uh, so walking back this way, you get lots and lots of space actually throughout the back of the pickup bed. And the front of the uh, truck is also pretty good because the front section is identical to Crew Max. Um, you know what, in terms of ride and handling and engine, I'm going to go deep dive on that one a little bit later on. But my first impression of this press vehicle, is, which is a true production model versus the uh, pre-production models we have been driving at press events, is that it is definitely very quiet, very refined, and compared to 2021 Tundra, which I drove extensively, it just handles all kinds of road conditions better. It doesn't have as much of the hop or the uh, kind of sway in the back. It stays pretty composed thanks to the new coil spring suspension in the back versus the leaf spring. Uh, and it is definitely more refined and smoother and kind of makes you feel like you're driving a, a much more expensive SUV almost. But having said that, it still does have a lot of the truck feel. It does get a little bit bouncy uh, right after going over a big bump, for example. And the, um, of course, the engine and transmission is probably your biggest concern. But you know what? Under most circumstances, it kind of feels like a small V8 engine. No, it does not feel exactly like a V8 engine. No question that it is a bit of a disappointment in that regard. But it's pretty torquey and you step on the gas, it takes off uh, in a really good manner. And uh, the braking works solid. Transmission is super smooth. So in terms of my general feedback, I like it so far. I really enjoy the ride and the feel of it. There's lots of little quirky thing inside that I may not be crazy about, but more on that later on. Now let's take a look at the interior roominess, which is one of the things that all of you guys have been asking about in terms of the double cab. Is it truly smaller in the rear than it used to be? Well, the numbers don't lie. And in fact, the rear and the front legroom have shrunken somewhat compared to 2021. According to the numbers I have here, in 2021, the front legroom was 42.5 inches versus 41.2 inches for the new 2022. So the front legroom has shrunken by 1.3 inches. Not a huge amount, but it is definitely a little bit uh, less than before. And in the rear, the situation is a little bit more um, serious because there isn't a lot of legroom to begin with in a double cab. But in the 2021 the version of the Tundra, we had 34.7 inches of legroom, but now we have for 2022, 33.3 inches, or exactly 1.4 inches less in the rear compared to the previous version of the Tundra. So the front is 1.3 inches less, the rear is 1.4 inches less, for a total of uh, 2.7 inches that has shrunken compared to 2021. So that is definitely noticeable, not so much in the front because I think there is a lot of uh, legroom and uh, 42.5 was a lot of legroom before, but even the 2022 version with 41.2 is plenty enough. So no issue at all in the front, even if you're a very tall person. Um, and uh, I suppose if you can keep moving the seat forward, then the rear is still somewhat usable. Or otherwise, I wouldn't recommend the uh, double cab for those people who wants to carry full-size adults or those people who are taller than average for a long drive in the rear. Um, you get lots of good hip room and shoulder room, and actually the headroom is also really good. In fact, those dimensions have not changed very much since 2021 and it's plenty, plenty of shoulder room, lots of hip room and good headroom. So no issues with any of those things. But um, in 2022, the leg room is definitely decreased. So if you are a type of person who wants to carry passenger for a long time and they want to be able to stretch their legs in the rear, it's probably not the best model to buy. The only advantage of buying a double cab over a Crew Max is a lower price and of course a longer bed, a foot longer than a Crew Max, so that is a big advantage. Otherwise, you should probably stay with the Crew Max for most of you if you want to use the rear uh, second seat as a normal passenger seat and not have to worry about squeezing someone in there. So I hope that demystifies all the questions that I've received so far about the double cab's legroom. I'm not quite sure why Toyota decided to shrink the uh, legroom front and back somewhat. It's a bit puzzling to me. 
but I'm sure they had their own reason for changing some of the dimension. Thankfully, all the other uh, interior dimensions have not changed and the seats are actually still very, very comfortable. So no issues there and everything else works really fine. So that's something to keep in mind. And hopefully this uh, clarifies uh, some of the questions about the double cab. I've got the engine on right now and you can tell it's very quiet even with uh, these two doors open. Uh, and I'm going to be talking about the engine and the powertrain a lot more in the coming days. But I just want to finish off by showing you the interior, which is a vast improvement over the predecessor. Uh, I really like the um, all of the controls and touch panels that works very well. It's really quick infotainment system. And I'm really glad they kept the traditional uh, shifter here. And all of the controls on the steering works really well as well. Uh, I do admit that on this 8 inch uh, display, it's a bit small and a little hard to read sometimes. And uh, you do get this profile not loaded message in the beginning. You just have to dismiss it and you can actually use it like a normal uh, infotainment system. Not a big deal actually, but uh, I think they're going to update this software. So some of these messages disappear. So those are some good stuff. Uh, all the other controls work really fine. Uh, I did notice that when there is no light on, it's a bit hard to read some of these uh, wording here during the day. But in terms of accessibility and in terms of ergonomics, everything is actually first class. So a lot more to come your way and a lot more to talk about this Tundra. Uh, I'm going to be specifically talking about the engine and also the uh, suspension, the steering feel. Um, all the stuff that you have been asking me for the last couple of months, I'll be covering quite extensively in my deep dive series of my assessment of the new 2022 Tundra. So please keep an eye on my channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'm signing off for now.